Hello everyone, welcome to Achievers IAS classes. Let's begin our discussion on the current events of 28th March 2018. First issue in news is regarding the recent judgment of the Supreme Court regarding honor killing. The judgment was in response to a petition filed by an NGO called Shakti Vahini wanting directions to the center and the state governments to take preventive steps against honor killing and a plan of action to curb them. It argued for special cells in each district which vulnerable couples could approach. To this, the center responded by saying, as honor killings are treated as murders, it is the primary responsibility of the states to deal with them, while the Kaap Panchayats had their own stance on the issue. The court, after hearing all the arguments, came down heavily on crimes committed in the name of honor, saying that choice of consenting adults to love and marry is a part of their fundamental rights, and honor killing takes away individual liberty, freedom of choice, and one's own perception of choice. It rejected the elevated sense of honor of elders, the collective like Kaapanchayats, who commit violence against couples for choosing to marry outside their caste, clan, or religion, and compared them to patriarchal monarchs. The court further held that consent of the family or the community or the clan is not necessary when two mutually consenting individuals of legal marriageable age decide to marry each other. It further issued a set of guidelines for authorities to safeguard young couples who are under the threat for marrying outside their caste or religion. As we are aware, Supreme Court had come down harshly on the institution of Kaap Panchayat and now this judgment is a corollary to the previous one and goes a long way in tackling heinous crimes like honor killing. With that, let's look into the next issue, which is regarding the plight of under trail prisoners in overcrowded prison facilities. The Supreme Court is hearing a matter related to inhuman conditions prevailing in around 1,382 prisons across the country. The petitioner in the case argues that around 240 jails across the country were housing inmates 150% above the normal capacity and had miserable prison staff to prisoner ratio. Adding to this, there were only 18 jails exclusively for women and women Although have separate areas in some jails, there is complete disproportionality as far as space for women inmates are concerned. Also, the jails were not modeled to house women inmates, particularly those who had minor children staying with them. Above all this, 60% of the under trial prisoners need not be actually arrested, but were still arrested and many of those who need not be remanded were done so by the police. Here we should recall that in September last year, the Supreme Court ruled that the government should take steps like appointment of counselors and support person for prisoners, particularly first time offenders, and encourage the need for opening up the prisons like more family visits, use of phones and video conferencing to communicate with lawyers and family to reduce the mental agony. It further directed the state legal services authority to conduct a study and performance audit of prisons and the government to constitute a board of visitors to initiate prison reforms. Various reports in the past have highlighted how majority of the under trial prisoners constitute those from poor and marginal sections of the society who cannot afford quality legal aid. In this regard, the observation made by the Supreme Court recently that criminals sentenced to imprisonment for six months or a year should be allocated social service duties rather than being put in already overflowing prisons is progressive and we have to wait and watch how the government acts on Supreme Court's advice. Till then, let's move on to the next issue, which is regarding the statements made by the whistleblower of Cambridge Analytica to a British Parliamentary Committee. During his testimony, he built a picture of the work carried out by the firm that played a role in the political processes across the world, like dissemination of violent video content through social media in Nigeria, targeting individuals with hordes of advertisements to influence the Brexit campaign, influencing the US presidential elections, etc. He further said that the company had worked on all kinds of projects in India, including at a regional level, stating that the firm had even officers and staff in India and named Congress as their client. This is worrisome and further highlights the urgency for strong data protection laws. With that, let's look into the next issue. Regarding the recent notice issued by the Airports Authority of India to two airlines for failing to launch services under the Regional Connectivity Scheme. 
द रीजनल कनेक्टिविटी स्कीम और द उडे देश का आम नागरिक उड़ान स्कीम सीक्स टू कनेक्ट अनसर्व एंड अंडर सर्व एयरपोर्ट एज वेल एज मेकिंग फ्लाइंग मोर अफोर्डेबल अंडर दिस स्कीम एयरलाइन पार्टिसिपेटेड इन द बिल्डिंग प्रोसेस टू बिगिन देर ऑपरेशन टू अनसर्व और अंडर सर्व एयरपोर्ट एंड एयरपोर्ट अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया इज द नोडल एजेंसी फॉर द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ द स्कीम विद दैट लेट्स मोवन टू द नेक्स्ट इश्यू विच इज एन एडिटोरियल रिगार्डिंग द रीसेंट एक्शन ऑफ रशिया रशिया हेज बीन इन न्यूज फॉर ऑल द रॉन्ग रीजन लेटली ranging from a nerve attack on a russian spy to allegations of influencing the us presidential elections to other alleged violations like arming the taliban militants and helping north korea to avoid un sanctions the latest of this which is the use of a chemical on a russian spy had resulted in expulsion of russian diplomats from us and other european union countries in this regard a question arises whether russia has truly gone rogue to reclaim its status as a superpower in this regard russia will make use of all opportunities to tighten its strategic grip on global politics whether in terms of influencing foreign elections undermining western coalition forces in syria iraq and afghanistan or aggravating the instability in the context of north korea and iran but we shouldn't forget that expulsion of russian diplomats might serve as an easy distraction device in the ongoing investigation against mr trump on allegations of collusion with russian entities to influence the 2016 presidential election in this regard western countries led by the us or the eu should find some ways to bring mr putin to the negotiating table to arrive at a sustainable solution for the problems still so far discussed the final issue in news today is regarding the fall in the bond yield after the announcement of the government of a reduced borrowing plan during the first half of the fiscal year this is a big relief to banks that were already facing with significant losses on their bond portfolios this is a welcome development because we saw in yesterday's news analysis how fears over the government's fiscal deficit current account deficit trade deficit and the raising oil prices was negatively impacting foreign investor sentiment in the bond market of india therefore the government's announcement of reduced fiscal spending might help in increasing the confidence of investors in the bond market and address some of the fears of these investors on that note i end today's news analysis do share this content if you like it thank you for watching have a nice day